Welcome back, WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are uh, positively into, uh, <laughs> it's like Groundhog Day, a Tom Brady Super Bowl week where we're talking about yesteryear, the 20th anniversary of uh, some special times. Dennis Colazzos, when I hold up Coach Billick here, who uh, we brought over to Coons Ford Security Boulevard on behalf of Living Classrooms Foundation, when I hold this up, where were you at that moment, Dennis Colazzos, January 28, 2001? You know what? Uh, I, was, uh, I was at work. <laughs> where, <laughs> where else would I be? But uh, I was soaking it all up and taking it all in. What a, what a wonderful time uh, for uh, all the sports fanatics in this town, especially uh, people like myself and yourself who saw the, the Baltimore Colts leave in 1983 with those awful – Mayflower vans. I still have uh, nightmares every time I see one. By the way, so, by the way, have you seen this picture? Have I shown this one to you? Yes, yes, I have. This yep. is the exact great, great, great picture, picture from the exact spot with the Mayflower. So, okay, yeah. good night. Uh, so, you know what? Uh, it's, you know, redemption, whatever you want to call it, uh, things made right in the universe. And when the coach left, I did predict we'd get a, a team. And I, would, I also predicted we would win a Super Bowl before they did. So it was all really good stuff. Absolutely great stuff. And I had to so, think about this. Like, since we've been back in league, I remember back in the beginning, like they, their fan, the Steelers fans would come down here and talk about one for the thumb, uh, you know, all that. Here we go, Steelers, here in Pittsburgh, going to the Super Bowl. So I, I remember all that. And I thought to myself, man, we're 25 years into this. And it sucks that we're not climbing the mountain, you know, and the Patriots have had theirs. The Buccaneers haven't had theirs. Lord knows the Chiefs have been waiting 54 years till they got theirs, right? So, uh, you know, I started feeling the Steelers, did they win one or two? Because I had Marvin on the show this week, and I brought up, because he's working in Sun Devil Stadium, and I had to bring up that he lost the Super Bowl there with the Steelers back in 95, right? And I was at that game, and, and I thought to myself, well, we've won as many as they've won. You, you've now already mentioned that we've got one more than Indianapolis, right? Yep. So all that Peyton Manning and all that stuff, they got one, we got two. I, I – it's a time to take some stock in all of this, I think, right? I mean, to say 25 years in, how important the Ravens are. We're going to watch Tom Brady do this thing next week. I'm okay with not going to the Super Bowl this year, then, because we weren't going to have as much fun as I'm showing all these old Whiskey Joe's pictures and stuff and all the fun we had 20 years ago. It, it can't be fun if you can't gather the right way. You know, it can't be as much fun. No, it can't be the same, Nestor. And I have mixed feelings about the Super Bowl. I, I like the Chiefs. I like the organization. I like Pat Mahomes. I also like the legend of Tom Brady. But I don't like the uh, Glazer family. I, I still remember oh. uh, the comments back then about, uh, I think Malcolm uh, said that he re sure rather have a team in Tampa Bay versus Baltimore. Baltimore. I remember so that, that. Yeah, that's left the mark. So, you know, I like Ryan Jensen. I like his family. Like, I like his dad, Dean. He and I are friends on social media. Good people, but uh, I think I'm going to be rooting for the Chiefs uh, uh, to, to bring the Lombardi home. You know, I feel like they got theirs last year. I, I like Bruce Arians. Ryan Jensen is my only, like, friend in the game. You know what I mean? Like, so I have a friend in the game. So I'm going, and I'm going to be pulling for Tampa. Boy, it makes me itch to want Gronkowski to win, Brady to win, right? I mean, uh, the, the, the Dominican Sue, you know, like I, Antonio Brown, you know, like they have gathered – you know, an island of very talented misfit toys, right, in, in that way. And it really does speak to Tom Brady. You and I talk about management all the time. We talk about you running Coons Ford, me running a company here for 30 years, trying to make all this work. Tom Brady running TB12 and Tom Brady running the business of Tom Brady at 43. Dan, it wasn't that long you and I ago we were 43. I remember 43 felt like, and it didn't feel like I wanted to play in the NFL. No, you're right. I think it also underscores that uh, the Jimmy's, Jimmy's and Joe's are more important than the X's and O's. I've always said that you know, nothing overcomes talent. And so uh, people have always said, is it Bill Belichick? Is it Tom Brady? It's always been a combination of both. But make no, no mistake about it. You, you can't take a, a donkey and train him to win the Kentucky Derby. You have to have a thoroughbred to start off with. And Tom Brady is a, is a thoroughbred. And for him to be in his 10th Super Bowl, it's just insane. And for Bill, Bill's got to be uh, taking a bitter pill watching Tom uh, in the playoffs and now in his 10th Super Bowl without him. So I think it's a lot of fun. The, the storylines are endless. And, uh, but, again, I, I do value the players more than the, uh, 
then the coach is just like your business and my business. The, the better talent we acquire around us, the smarter we appear. Do you know off the top of your head, because I didn't, and maybe you do, it's no embarrassment to not know, exactly when Tom Brady was drafted, the year. Because I had to think, was it like 98, 9, 2, you know, I was trying to think of exactly when it was, and then like what the draft was that year. And yeah. look, the plague and a new company and plenty of time on my hands and no ball games to watch. All I watch is Jeopardy with my wife in the news, you know. All the rest of the time I'm in here doing Baltimore Positive. You're over doing Coons Ford, except on Thursdays between 3 and 5 when you come into our world with Dennis Colazzo's show. Rebroadcast on Sunday mornings, of course. Um, you know, I, I guess for all of this in, in thinking about Tom Brady and all of these years and everything that goes on, I go back to say how – because Matt Cavanaugh sort of famously wanted the yep. Ravens to pick him and, you know, what we could have had and who we could have had and Chris Redman, uh, who I'm having on the show uh, this week. We're going to talk to him from Louisville Mail uh, down there, and he's coaching the indoor football now. Do, I, I, Jamal Lewis, Travis Taylor, you know, beginning of the draft – but all of the names that went off the board before Tom Brady, all the quarterbacks, all the players, it really is amazing. It, it, it's, it's incredible, actually. Yeah, I don't recall the year he came out, but I do recall he was a sixth-round sixth draft pick. And I, back then, I had a lot more time on my hands, and Esther, a lot more free time, so I was able to watch college football. And he was a tremendous leader at the University of Michigan. He had grit. You know, he had talent. Uh, he was Tall and thin and scrawny, but he always figured out a way to win. He was a he was a taller uh, version of to me of Joe Montana, who I enjoyed watching at Notre Dame as well. So here's so. the top of the draft. I'm putting it up for everybody watching that on WNS TV and our uh, and our, our Baltimore Positive video channel. Courtney Brown, Lavar Arrington, Chris Samuels, Peter Warwick, Jamal Lewis, Corey Simon, Thomas Jones, Plexiglass Burris. Brian Erlacher is the Hall of Famer in the class. He was selected ninth. Travis Taylor was selected 10th. You know, when I went through these names, I mean, I wanted them to draft Bubba Franks. I remember looking at John Abraham and Julian Peterson and all these names. I remember whack job Al Davis took Sebastian Janikowski with the 17th yep. pick. Chad Pennington was the 18th pick to the Jets. I know the Ravens like Sean Alexander, uh, you know, with that 10th pick. Instead, they wound up with Jamal Lewis because they had two picks in the top ten because of that Atlanta trade that year. But then you go through all of these names and Keith Bullock and, uh, you know, the decent decent players. Lavernius Coles was a third-round draft pick. Uh, Aaron Shea, fourth-round draft pick. Uh, my man Peter Sermon, who was a coach by uh, Jimmy Schwartz in Tennessee, pick number 128. But you have to go all the way down to the sixth round, all the way down to pick 199 to find Tom Brady. The pick before him was Matt Bowen, who's been on my program from time to time at Iowa, strong safety. I looked at this draft, and I, you know, I, I think to myself, where was I that day? And I remember the day Jamal was drafted and, and Travis Taylor was drafted and the promise of our franchise. Man, it feels like a million years ago, right? Like, it's crazy. Not that he's just playing, and Luke and I have been through this, but that he's playing and he might win the Super Bowl again next week. It's really an astonishing – in our lifetime, you know, the, the Babe Ruth and the Paul Runyon, you know, you know, stories and what we saw with maybe Ali, Gretzky, you know, Jordan, whatever, this thing takes the cake then. I mean, and it's still unfolding. Yeah, and the, the the wild thing too, Nestor, it seemed like he's having a lot of fun. Uh, he and Bruce Arians have clicked – Bruce has given him a lot more freedom to be a coach on the field and never mind the embarrassment of riches he has at all the skill positions. So he's having fun. And I do believe he's going to play until he's 45, as he stated, uh, he has to have clearance by his wife to do so. And uh, we're going to get a couple more years out of Tom Brady. The team seems to be in really, really good shape and let's see what happens with the Super Bowl, Right. But uh, he, he has a chance to add to his legacy and his legend. He's already done so whether he loses or not, the team loses or not, but, uh, Look, they've got a good chance to win. They have a very good defense, and they're well coached. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to the matchup. should be a very fun Super Bowl. We would look at Tom Brady and say, what hasn't he done? You know, Giselle, the rings. Well, he's never not done it in New England. He's never not done it in the NFC. He never did it on the road having to go and beat Brett Favre and Drew Brees. You know, he, he's never done it in his own stadium. You know, never won a championship in Foxborough, right? Like, he's going to have a chance to do so many things that, like, check off boxes that I didn't even know were on the card, literally. Yeah, he looks good. He looks strong. You, you can see the arm, arm strength is still there. The touch is there. Uh, the, the guttiness of him 
uh, with seconds left on the half going for for the for deep ball and, and really gutting that defense of the Packers out. Uh, he did a lot of things right in order for them to be in this position and, uh, of course, to, to progress to the Super Bowl. Uh, he's an amazing athlete. He's definitely the greatest of all time at the position of the quarterback, and I don't even think it's close. It's fascinating. We'd say he's picked 199, and Brian Erlacher came off, right? So the Ravens could have taken Erlacher instead of Jamal. I went through all of those names, Dennis, and you, you were looking at them too, and I encourage anyone to go look at the 2000 draft. Jamal Lewis was the third best pick in the draft. And, and I'm not even saying that based on where Brady was then because he won a championship pretty early on, so it was obvious of his value, right? But at that point, you could have said he's Mark Rippon. You know what I mean? Like at that point, yeah. Jamal was an impact player. We won a championship. Jamal won rushing titles, ran us into the playoffs was the entire offense for the team. We didn't have a very good quarterback at that time. Like, all of that, Jamal was a really, really good pick, man. And, you know, wound up going off to Cleveland or whatever. But in that draft, the Ravens did okay with that pick. Yeah, I actually had Sean Alexander graded a lot higher than Jamal. And uh, Alexander had a very, very good career with the Seattle Seahawks, of course. But, well, Jamal uh, had an injury issue. Yeah, yeah. And – uh but I tell you what, it, it worked out well for both organizations, as, uh, particularly for the Ravens. Jamal Lewis was, was better than advertised. He had some injuries to Tennessee, but when he came to the league, look, the, the Ravens don't win that Super Bowl without Jamal Lewis, right? He was just a tank and a beast running between those tackles. Dennis Galatzos is here. He's over Coots Ford. You can see on the shirt. Uh, he, you know, that's a nice speech you have over there, Security Boulevard. I, you know, I didn't, right, you, you know why you're doing that? You're doing that because it's the 20th anniversary of Whiskey <laughs> Joe's. That's the tree from Whiskey Joe's. I think I remember that on the causeway. Uh, you know, Dan, it's been 20 years on all this. And, you know, I guess for the Ravens fandom, this is the, uh, we watched the Eric DaCosta press conference. We've now seen the John Harbaugh. I guess Steve Bashotti doesn't have press conferences anymore because he's afraid if I'm going to ask him if he's going to sell the team or not. Uh, or whether he ever tried to sell the team, which – he may or may not have uh, talked about such a thing. Uh, the Masson story is obviously something this week as well. I don't know where the Orioles off season is or whether there's going to be a season, certainly for the Ravens and Eric DaCosta talking about signing Jackson, signing Mark Andrews, players he wanted, obviously parting ways with Morgan Cox and Mark Ingram and others. This is an interesting off season from a cap angle because, you know, you try to guess how many cars you're going to sell over there at Security Boulevard at Coons Ford, right? But, you know, the, the Ravens have been playing with a cap, and all these people in the league have managed around a cap. They, there's a lot of uncertainty in every industry, right? Yeah, there really is, and that's, that's what makes things interesting, right? Uh, the goalposts uh, get moved every single year for different reasons. Sometimes they're within your control, sometimes beyond your control, right? But you, you adapt and you move forward. But uh, organizations win championships in Esther. We're very fortunate that we have a great one. In the Baltimore Ravens, they're solid from the ownership all the way down. And uh, it was I enjoyed Eric DaCosta's press conference. I thought he was honest and uh, on point. Uh, they, they have some work to do and uh, try to figure out how to get the, from the Elite Eight down to the Final Four and to the promised land, right? But they have a young team. They have a lot of good uh, young skilled players. And uh, you know, a couple of tweaks here and there and some luck. They should be right back in the thick of things next year. Dennis, you know I you know, have a relationship with Eric. You know, we, we've had from the very beginning. I, I met him at the Pikesville Hilton in 1997. Phil Savage said, I want you to meet this guy here. He's going to be a good fellow around here. You know, like so. Uh, and, and Phil now works for the Jets. So in order to get Phil on, I have to deal with PR, but Joe Douglas is calling in. So I, I don't ask me how things work, you know, with chain of command. But I've had Marvin on this week. I've had Mike Smith on this week. Uh, I saw that, they, that the Ravens have hired Rex Ryan's brother. I don't know how to find Rex, but I did find Jack Del Rio. He's coming on later. He'll be dressed like you today, uh, wearing that uh, WFT, WTF. I have to be nice to him just because he's Jack and I love him. Uh, but I, I'll give him as much of a hard time as I gave Marvin when he was here. By the way, I wore a Bengals turtleneck for Marvin. Marvin okay, sent well, me nice. a gift, you know, back. And, and it was a bad gift because he sent it to me because I wanted to support him to beat the Steelers in a playoff game. And that turned out to be like the Joey Porter, Vontez perfect game. So, you know, I wore that. So it's the only time I've ever worn Bengals gear publicly, I promise you. So things have happened here to bring all this back. But from a management standpoint, you just said something wonderful about Eric DaCosta. You said, I watched his press conference and I enjoyed it. And you know what? I sent him a text. And I haven't talked to Eric in a year. 
the last time I talked to Eric physically in the same place in the same time was probably a press box on the road a year ago, like a long time ago. And we text back and forth when people die and when things happen. And sometimes it's sports or politics or we see something. But I have not spoken about football with Eric DaCosta in a year. I have not asked a question, football-related or otherwise, in any way. And I sent him a text, and I said, that was really great. I learned a lot. That's all I said. I said, you know, these Zoom things, not you and me, Den, because we're entertainers and performers, of course, but these Zoom videos on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and post-game and Monday – I'll be really honest. I haven't watched a whole lot of them. If you've noticed, I haven't asked a whole lot of questions because they really feel like hostage videos. And I felt like Eric was very comfortable in the medium. And more than that, to your point, I learned a lot. And I didn't feel like he was being evasive. I felt like he was welcoming us in. And I don't really feel that from the organization very often anymore. Yeah, no, I thought he was. He, I, I thought he represented the organization very, very well. And uh, look, maybe they're a little Pollyannish to think that they can continue winning this way uh, without improving the passing game. That's one thing that I came away with. Uh, I think they're 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 hoping too much versus taking uh, active steps to 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 you know make that passing game better, get that offense a little bit more balanced. But again, uh, that's what they get paid big money for, right? That's uh, and they're they're accountable for the results that they produce. Uh, to get over the hump. So that's, uh, that's a challenge in front of them. Well, when I sit for an hour and hear Eric talk about plans and talk about things and talk frankly in the way that he's done in my kitchen, you know, I, I, um, I don't know. It makes me feel better about all of it, right? I mean, wins, losses, ownership, this, that, money, PSLs, skyboxes, road trips, you know, whatever. It, they definitely have a plan, you know, and I know that. And that's one of the things I've said to anyone who wants to play fire Greg Roman, don't sign Lamar, you know, all of that, the fan stuff, the stuff that we have fun with and you have fun with that on Twitter. They know far more than we do. And you know that, and I know that we can have our fun with it, but there really is for people like you and me, a real built in respect for when they swing and miss on Earl Thomas and Eric says in the same way you've had to say to Mr. Coons at various points, yeah, I probably need to do that a little better. In the same way I've had to say to my wife, we probably could have done that better. Or as we, I've had to say to my son, I probably didn't handle that the best. The, the, the way you just say, I'm trying to get better. And I don't see that from every person in society, especially people in high places, right? That, that part of the humility of, I'm an impatient guy, and, you know, I want to win. <laughs> I, I like that part of what I saw with Eric the other day because I don't get that from a lot of sports or a lot of people in any walk of life, much anymore. Yeah, this is not the type of organization that's going to rest on its laurels. It, they understand that getting to the playoffs and winning a game, it's not good enough. The standard's much higher. The the goal year after year is to win the Super Bowl, and anything less than that is failure. Uh, not total failure, not catastrophic failure. Certainly, only one team gets a, gets a, the opportunity to take the Lombardi home. But that doesn't mean that they rest on their laurels. They understand if they don't get better, they're going to fall behind, right? So that 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 being dissatisfied all the time. And even if they won a Super Bowl, I expect this organization to remain dissatisfied. But that's what makes them great. And that's why, that's why, that's why I love them. You know, that's why I respect them. And uh, look, they, they want to win just as bad as the, the fans do. A lot of times the fans think that they don't care. You know, you and I know better than that. They care. They care an awful lot. Uh, the money aside, it's a lot more than that to these, these, uh, these people. Well, you said something about getting better or getting worse. And, you know, We all have to deal with that, you know, every single day. But the fact that, you know, they're over there trying to get better makes you look forward to September in a different way than, let's say, the Orioles who, you know, initiate the 455 press conference getting rid of Rick Dempsey, right? I mean, like, (laughs) do you have anything you want to say on that that we haven't already covered that, you know, when you do things poorly, you do them poorly all the time, right? Like, it, it, they don't do much right. And to our point, we've sat here with the Ravens, and I'm talking 20 years later and holding up trophies and about the last guy that did it right, the last two guys that did it right, and talking about it all week. You know, there is this other point where, like, the baseball team, this is supposed to be baseball season. It really is. Well, I think it's a contrast of, of, of two organizations, a contrast of doing things the right way and the wrong way. I mean, when they couldn't accommodate the Ravens to, to open up 
uh, in 2013 to defend their, their Super Bowl uh, uh, championship against the Denver Broncos. When they couldn't put that together, that t- told us all you needed to know. That's why I've tuned out of the Orioles for many, many years now. I keep a, a small eye on them, of course, as a sports fan, but uh, until further notice, uh, they are what the record says they are, which is a, a terrible, terrible franchise and organization. All right, man. Well, we got a lot of things going on around here, certainly with the city. we got a Super Bowl next week. Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, we're going to have off-season doings. I know you're going to be here every Thursday driving folks home from 3 until 5, as well as on Sunday morning. You can follow Dennis at the Colazzo Show. Hey, man, give me a little a Ford update here because I've been seeing a lot of Ford ads. We've got new things going on. You're always in on these meetings. Give me a little automotive update. What's going on at Security Boulevard? Now, Ford is doing real well. Nestor, we have the all-new 2021 Ford F-150. That's the uh, flagship uh, best-selling vehicle in over 40 years in the U.S. Uh, that's selling real well. We have the all-new Bronco. Uh, you and Jen will certainly look sharp in one of those. We've got the big Bronco coming in, the Mach-E. So the, the news for Ford Motor Company is great. The stock is up. Um, the incentives are always there. And Uh, Business is very, very good. We thank you, of course, and all the good people listening to WNST for all the referrals and repeat business that we do. And uh, there's nothing like being a Ford dealer, Nestor. It really isn't. Well, I hope you enjoy the reminiscences this week of uh, of all these things. We've talked to Marvin Lewis and Jack and Mike and Brian about managing it and 20 years later and what it did to their lives. And uh, and it makes me feel good to hold up old pictures of Whiskey Joe's and uh, drink a, a toast to my friend Bobby Nick, my dearly departed friend uh, who he threw parties with. And it even makes me think of New Orleans too, Dan. And, and again, I go right back to the beginning. It makes me hopeful for the next time, right? So that's why we watch these Eric DaCosta press conferences, right? Hey, absolutely. And uh, again, we know that uh, we're going to be in the mix, right? Year in, year out. Not always going to win the trophy, but uh, uh, we're going to be in the mix. And that's all you can hope for as a fan is to to watch a good product on the field. And that's exactly what we've seen uh, ever since the Ravens came to town. Dan, I'm going to tell you one thing. I've invited you to Indianapolis many times. I'm not going to do that anymore because I'm probably not going back either. But 52 weeks from right now, you and I could be dipping our toes in the Pacific Ocean, right? I got a little place out in Manhattan Beach I know about. You know what I mean? SoFi Stadium, you know? I mean, just think about it, all right? I mean, all right. that's a shots in our arms, no masks, right? You and me hitting the strip up in Hollywood. Come on, right? Hey, I'm ready to travel, as you can see by the palm trees. I'm ready to go. This, this cold weather for the birds. Give me some heat. I want Is some... that the tree in Zuma Beach where Don Henley wrote Boys of Summer? <laughs> I think maybe. <laughs> I, I think it may be it, but I, I want my toes in, in the sand and a cold drink in my hand. This, is, uh, this, this cold weather is getting to me, Nestor. I need some heat. I'm going to the lagoon and we'll listen to pet sounds out on the beach, all right? How about get, that? Get me out of here, quick. Hey, I appreciate you. We'll see you on Thursday, all right? Take care. Be well. Dennis Colazzo, Steve Colazzo Show, and, of course, out of Coons Ford Security Boulevard. You can find him here on Thursday from 3 until 5 and on Sunday mornings. Love having Dennis around. And appreciate uh, the sponsorship of the tech service as well. Uh, breaking news, you know, Luke is there. You're all on it. Uh, all brought to you by our friends at Coons Ford of Security Boulevard. I am Nestor. We are WNST.net. We are celebrating 20 years of effing awesomeness with the purple and uh, championships and um, – People we love. We are WNSD.net, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking. Purple Rain, 20 years later, and Baltimore positive.